Hey guys, Nintendo here. This is the Tribute 64 controller by Retrobit, a modern day spiritual successor to the widely praised Hori Pad Mini, which comes in varieties both for Nintendo 64 and for PC and consoles over USB. But how does it compare to its more pricey predecessor? In this video, I'll be reviewing both models of the Tribute 64 and putting them head to head against three of their biggest competitors the Hori Pad Mini, the Retro Fighters Brawler 64, and the original 64 gamepad to determine if this newest edition deserves a spot in your setup. So, let's get to it. Okay, so here is the Tribute 64, and as I mentioned in the intro, this is a modern reimagining of the highly sought after Hori Pad Mini. Many collectors find the Hori Pad much more comfortable than the original controller, and it's much more like a modern gamepad in design with two handles and a bigger analog stick. At first glance, the Tribute looks almost identical, but is much cheaper to find. It's only $25 compared to what you'll have to pay for the Hori Pad Mini on sites like eBay, which can go for over $100. The buttons of the Tribute 64 are nearly identical to those of the Hori Pad, with two major differences, the start button and the triggers, both of which I find are slightly improved with the Tribute 64. The start button is a little bit bigger, and both of the triggers are a little bit larger as well. I definitely prefer the size on the Tribute, although oddly they're missing the L and R labels that you would see on the authentic Hori Pad. Another major difference between these two controllers is in its joystick. Now, some of you might remember my biggest issue with the Brawler 64 was with the shape of its analog gate, this piece of plastic that surrounds the thumbstick. So in the case of the original controller, the analog gate looks something like this. Uh, it's shaped like an octagon with eight sides, but each of the individual points are not actually equidistant from the center. The diagonal directions are actually a little bit farther out, making the shape a little bit closer to a square. In the case of the Brawler 64 gamepad, Retro Fighters actually went with a perfect octagon for their analog gate, meaning that the diagonal directions are actually a little bit closer to the center of the stick. Now, the Hori Pad is more in line with the original Nintendo 64 controller in this way, and has a more authentic analog input. But the Tribute has gone the same route as the Brawler 64, with its equidistant octagonal gate, which is not really authentic to true Nintendo 64 input. To be fair, this is a pretty minor issue, and most players would probably never notice a difference. But that's not where the differences between these two joysticks end. Like I did with my video on my favorite Nintendo 64 controllers, I used a test input program to measure the sensitivity of the Tribute's analog stick, and I found that it is wildly more sensitive than the original, and inconsistent in its sensitivity on top of that. Compare this result to both the Hori Pad and the original stick, and you'll notice a major discrepancy. Oof. Finally, the joystick itself seems to be made of a much lower quality material than the plastic found in the Hori Pad. After just a couple hours of use, I noticed notches in the plastic from basic use on the underside of the joystick. Consider that this Hori Pad has been in use for 20 years, and this has been out for just a couple of weeks. And when compared to the Hori Pad's buttery smooth analog stick, this one feels grainy and has a lot more friction. In fact, overall, the controller just feels a bit cheaper than the Hori Pad. In that sense, you get what you pay for. Now, all this might sound rather doom and gloom, but one very important thing that we haven't covered yet is the USB model of this controller, and I'm happy to say that the Tribute 64 is a much better controller for PC than for Nintendo 64. Uh, not because of any difference in hardware, but just because of the nature of playing on PC rather than on a console. See, on PC, you have the ability to calibrate the control stick to fit whichever program you're using, so the sensitivity issue can be mostly mitigated. On top of that, when playing PC titles or retro games through emulation, you can deliberately reassign buttons for comfort. For example, with most titles, I like to set Z as the left trigger and R as the right trigger, whereas on console, I would be stuck with the Z and R buttons in their default positions. After calibration and setup, I tested the Tribute 64 USB with a few games, and honestly, I loved it. I still prefer the Brawler 64 and the authentic Hori Pad for Nintendo 64 games, but you'll need a separate adapter if you want to use either of those with PC. So here are my final thoughts. The Tribute 64 is not a true replacement for an authentic Hori Pad Mini, but it is literally a quarter of the price and is pretty good at approximating it. I wouldn't recommend it for anyone who already has a Brawler 64 or a Hori Pad Mini for use with consoles, but if you're looking for a solid controller for N64 games on PC, this is a low-cost alternative that does the job. 
Overall, I give the Retrobit Tribute 64 a 6.5 out of 10 stars. And as always, if you'd like to check out any of the controllers featured in this video, I'll have links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this review. As always, if you did like the video, please do consider subscribing to Nintendrew for all sorts of cool gaming content, and make sure to share it with any friends who might find it interesting. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey guys, thanks again for watching and for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you like this one, here are two more videos you might like as well. As always, if you like what I do and would like to help out the channel, I've got a link to my Patreon on the right side of your screen. And otherwise, I hope you look forward to the next one. Take care!